Oh boy, did I find something new. This is, this is like... Honestly, a whole new, whole new way of playing Fiora, and it is ridiculous. Basically, early game, you are weak. Very weak, okay? Very, very weak early game. You're just chilling. But late game? This build in the late game, like... You'll see, you'll see. It's a whole different playstyle as well, as opposed to normal Fiora. Everything is really different. It feels uh, like, it almost feels like a different champion. I've played a lot of Fiora myself, but I only recently started incorporating a Mana Mune in my build, and I've tried many different ways of building it. Um, many different ways. So, what do I mean with many different ways? You know, I, I tried starting off with a Tear of Goddess, and then going for Divine Sunder or Trinity Force. I tried starting off with the Mana Mune as a whole, first item. I tried starting off with a whole first item, and then a Mana Mune. And honestly, what is the best? It I would say it's situational, okay? If you're behind, like if you're very behind, you have two choices. If you want to catch back up, you're going to build the Divine Sunderer or the Trinity Force. By the way, the difference between Divine Sunderer and Trinity Force, um, against tanks or against high HP enemies, you build Divine Sunderer. Against, you know, squishy enemies, you build Trinity Force. But you generally want to build a Divine Sun Sunderer. Generally, it's going to be better, but both are good. So it depends. If you want to make a comeback very fast in the game, skip the Mana Mune early on and just immediately finish your Divine Sunder or Trinity Force. If you want to play the game very passively and skill to the late game, then you can choose to go for a Tear of Goddess or even a whole Mana Mune to scale it into the Nomura Mana very fast and then second item you finish the, uh, the Divine Sunder or Trinity Force. Bear in mind, this way you're going to be incredibly weak early on, but you're going to get your late game power spike much faster than if you would just go for a Divine Sunder first and then a Mana Mune because you have to stack up all the, you know, all the stacks then. For the boots, it's situational. Uh, Mercury sets are great, players to caps are great, but with this build, I love Ionian Boots of Lucidity. You know, further reducing the cooldown of your first ability, which is like really the main power of this of this build. Third item, you know, here it already starts to become situational, but Steric Cage is generally good, especially if you go for a Divine Sunder, because it gives you a lot of health. Um, Blade of the Noon King is a bit of an interesting one. You can go for it. Remember, your first ability applies on-hit effects. So if the enemies are like really, really tanky, you go for Divine Sunder, Mana Mune, Blade of the Noon King. This way, you're like a 1v1 god. Literally, no one is going to beat you in a 1v1. Even if you're not a good Fiora, if you go for that build, no tank ever will beat you in a 1v1. All you have to do is just spam your first ability. You don't even have to hit your vitals, to be honest. Death Dance is, of course, always a good item on Fiora because with Fiora, generally, you want to take out one enemy. So having a Death Dance, you know, you're going to take all the damage, store 35% of the physical damage, and then you take out an enemy. Your ult will heal you and the Death Dance will heal you. So, like, it's a combination of, like, healing up a lot and, and being super tanky for a very short duration. Exactly what Fiora needs. Guardian Angel, you always go for, by the way, as your last item. Always. Like, every single game, every single scenario. Even if you're against full AP, you're basically go for guardian angel by the way if you are against full ap instead of a sterox cage you go for more of more marshes anti-heal is also good like here you can see some situational items bramble fast could possibly be good if you're against like a lot of adcs or if you're against if you're laning against like a vein or something and the enemy has a lot of healing but generally you want to go for executioner's calling if you need anti-heal against a mundo you know against um again anything that has healing like a set even you you want to go for the executioner's calling early on in the game and you, you you don't really finish the mortal reminder to be honest i mean you can but i wouldn't recommend it because half of fiora's damage is true damage so you're kind of wasting a lot of gold by going for mortal reminder you know you're wasting your resources on the last whisper passive you don't need it for the passive i love protobelt i pretty much always go protobelt on fiora because you can proc your passive with protobelt as well so it's it's just really really good to go for protobelt when you play fiora um, you can also go stasis, but like, come on. You really gonna play Fiora with a stasis? Of course not. Teleport is also viable. If you, you know, if you want to split push and teleport. By the way, hole breaker is, I, I would say it's not really good on Fiora anymore. You just don't need it. Just go for a different item. Like, this item is just much weaker now. It's much, much weaker. I, I, I don't recommend it on any champion anymore, to be honest. For the runes, you go for Grasp of the Undying. It's all about like destroying your lane and uh, the enemy in the lane, even though you're going for a later game build. Brutal also helps you in the early game because when you use your first ability, you're gonna proc Brutal every time. And um, um, let's see, uh, what was I talking about? Even in the late game, when you're constantly spamming your first ability, you're you're gonna proc Brutal all the time. It's very very strong. 
Here I have a second wind. I believe that's because my last enemy was like a Teemo or something, or some sort of a ra like Vayne, something like that. Like if you're against a Teemo, against Vayne, against Cannon, against any sort of a ranged champion, you go for second wind so you can survive your lane. Otherwise, you can go for bone plating to win those small engages. So like you engage on the enemy with your first ability, and you win that because you go for bone plating. Um, Adaptive Carapace can also be good against like heavy AD compositions, but yeah, it, it, like Perseverance, you can really go for anything, it just depends on the game. Fourth rune, I still go Demolish, I see a lot of people go for Transcendence with this build because they want to reduce the cool, uh, Transcendence, because they want to reduce the cooldown further with their first ability, but I still go for Demolish because it's just such a good rune to, to, to demolish turrets, it's, it's way too good to not go. Like you're missing out on so much gold if you don't go for Demolish, so I really recommend it. For the spells, you go for Ignite and Flash. So that is it about the build. Let's now get into the gameplay. So in this gameplay, I believe I went for Mana Mune immediately. I rushed the Mana Mune. I think I did that in this game. Um, as I said, I was testing out everything. Like, you'll see. I, you know, I, I constantly test out different builds. And this is it is viable to go for Mana Mune first, but you're so weak early game. Like, it is viable in a way that you get your Muramana very early on in the game, but meh, I don't know. I would rather, like, I think it's better to just go for um, for a Trinity Force or Divine Sunder first. If you do want to stack up your tier, just go for tier, and then go for the Divine Sunder or Trinity Force. Don't finish the Mana Mune, it's just not worth it, really. Here you can see I'm trying to bully the vein, but it's a vein. <laughs> it's not easy to bully a vein. I'm trying to use to hit the Vitals. Like, the only way that I'm engaging on her is with Grasp of the Undying or with my Vitals. Otherwise, I'm never going on her. I could honestly flash out. That's what I did. Nice. But I died. Wow. Look, right here. Let me actually go back. I almost killed her. Look, I flashed, but I didn't proc the Vital. If I flashed, I think if I flashed a little bit more to the right, I would have instantly killed her, by the way. And this is maybe because I'm a little bit rusty on Fiora. I, I like I'm not on my A game on Fiora, which means you know like I'm not I'm not on the top tier Fiora that I was at because I remember when I made one Fiora video, I played like 80 games of Fiora, 8-0. Yeah, believe it or not, I played like 80 games of Fiora, and that's when I like I was I was a god at this champion. I'm still really good. Don't get me wrong, like I'm really good at Fiora. You'll see in this game. But it's not like before where I would just embarrass even pro players when I was against them on my Fiora. It was crazy. But like that's the thing with Fiora. The skill ceiling of Fiora, which means like how good you can get on this champion, is really unlimited. It's, it's truly unlimited. Like I'm not kidding with you when I say it is unlimited. Because Fiora's ultimate is an ability that you can actually proc in like... Maybe between half a second and, and one second. If you do it perfectly. I'm not saying I do it. But oh beautiful. I, I blocked her stun right there. But what I'm trying to say is. There's always room for improvement. Always. Like because with Fiora. Your third ability. Let me. I'm, I'm going to explain some advanced stuff of Fiora to you guys right now. Fiora's third ability. Makes her attack speed max. You literally max out your attack speed. So the next attacks are gonna have maximum attack speed. If you combine this with a flash, oh by the way, your first ability cancels a basic attack too. So you can do basic attack first ability. So think and proto belt procs your ultimate as well. It procs the vitals. So think about it. Think about the possible combos you have to instantly proc your ultimate. You know you can proto belt to the enemy. Use your first ability, flash third ability, and proc the remaining two vitals. Or you can just basic attack one vital with the third ability. Use your first ability, flash over it, and pro proto belt. You know, there, there are ways you can proc your ult super fast. Like, faster than you could ever even imagine. Like, and if you really, really want to master that stuff, master the art of ulting with Fiora, you should go into practice mode. I've, I did that as well back in the days, like in practice mode. Right here, yet again, like I didn't kill Vayne because I didn't hit the Vital. I played it super badly. Ooh, never mind. That was actually a banger. Boom, boom, boom. Now the bottom one, just the bottom one. Boom, there we go. I'm not going to lose the fight anymore. I proc my Vitals. I'm not going to lose that fight anymore. That was okay. But it's incredibly important to actually proc the Vitals on your ultimate. Like that is definitely what makes or breaks a Fiora player. If you're unable to hit your vitals, 
Like, you're gonna suck on this champion. It's all about hitting vitals, this champion. Literally. Like, the, the, when I started to get good at hitting vitals, way better than this video, by the way, I really started to understand how this champion is so good. Like... You know when you're against a really good Fiora player and you just feel like you have no chance? Because, you know, you just the damage is just unreal. And then when you give it a try, every time you go in, you just get bullied. Like, every time you use your first ability, you get bullied. And the, literally, the difference is the Vitals. And the way that the Vitals work, by the way, is if you look at an enemy champion, like this Vayne right here, there is um, two halves. Like, you have to cut it like this. Like a, like a diagonal line like this. You see that? Like if I put this diagonal line on her. Oh. Wait. Boom. Come on. Surely that's a kill. Yeah. So you cut the champion like this. There's going to be one vital here. And another one here. So if you proc one of these two vitals. The next one will always be here. Either here or here. Same story, if you proc one of these two vitals, the next one will always be here. And even if you walk out of vision, so if you don't see the enemy anymore and the first vital was here, the next one is gonna be one of these two. So it's never, so never if the first vital was here, it's never gonna be the next one here. Never. It's always this diagonal line on the champion and it's the opposite. So this uh, this opens up strategy. You know, if, the, if one of the vitals on the enemies is like here, you can walk out of vision, so the next one is here, so you can proc it. You can clearly see me do this in lane as well. Wow. No. Oh! If I ulted faster, if I ulted her, I would have killed her and I wouldn't have died. Oh my god. See, like, there is so much room for improvement. Like, even though I play a good Fiora... It's nothing compared to a perfect Fiora. But for example, if you compare my Jin to, you know, like a perfect Jin, you're probably not gonna find that many difference. Obviously you will, you know, obviously every ult can be better, but with Fiora, you can literally take the best player in the world and you're still gonna be able to, you know, the difference between that player and the, and the perfect, the perfect Fiora is still gonna be huge. And like not even small, it's huge. Because, like, every flash combo can be... Like, right here, I could have blocked the Leona stun, you know what I mean? There are so many things. Right here, I'm gonna proc the honey fruit probably, at some point. Take the heal, and keep fighting. I blocked it. I need to flash. Ah, he killed me. That's a red cane, by the way. I realized it's gonna be a red cane. He's, he's gonna be annoying. Red cane is really annoying. But right now, you can clearly see I'm not that strong. Why? Because I went for mana mini first. By the way, guys, oh, those skin winners. I'll put the skin giveaway winners in the top comment and in the description. So check out whether or not you have one. Uh, I, please don't make me forget this. I'm gonna pick three winners after this video and I'll put them there. And for this month, I'm doing, I'm giving away three more skins, by the way. And all you have to do is put down a comment. And also, guys, you've been so amazing with liking the videos. You know, the YouTube videos on my channel have been consistently reaching at least a thousand likes. My channel is growing so much. It's crazy. Like every day, there's like hundred, a hundred new subs. I don't know where they're coming from. And literally, all of this is because of all the support you guys have given. The likes, the comments, and everything. So, like, I want to ask you, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you give it a like. It, it helps so much. It's crazy. It's just a small button with so much effect for the channel. And I'm so thankful to you guys for it. So thankful. So, right now, you can see I'm, I'm getting close to 700 stacks. And when you reach that 700 stacks, even though you don't have Eternity Force or the Divine Thunder yet, you're going to be strong. Because the damage buff you it gives to your abilities is so big, it's actually pretty crazy. Ooh, Trinity Force. This is the power spike, guys. I just need to go back and get my Trinity Force. And that is the power spike, because I'm getting close to my Muramana too. I can defend. I'm not really afraid of them, to be honest. Like, I'm not afraid of them at all. Yeah, bye-bye. He's dead as well. He, he, fa <laughs> he failed his flash. That's a bit unfortunate. Fiora hard counters Leona, by the way, because Le blocking Leona stuns is pretty easy. Because when she engages, you can... It's very easy to see when she engages. And her ult, if you just pay attention to it, you can easily block it. Because it takes like half a second, 
between like half and one second for it to actually proc. So you have more than enough time to block it. Here I'm gonna split push. Because I do have a demolish. Probably gonna proc demolish and run away. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. I should be fine. I finished my Muram. Oh my god, what is that? What? That's Red Kane, man. Strong, he's strong. That's crazy, Red Kane, like... He, oh, he's even going for a Muramana build, so that means he's gonna be strong late game. You always need to remember, like, Mana Mune is a late game item. It, it's so weak early game, but when you get that Muramana, the power of this item is immense. It's the value you get for your gold is crazy because you have so much mana, you can spam your ability, so much ability haste, and every time you use an ability or a basic attack, you do way more damage because it consumes your mana. It's just, it's such a big item. And now I finished it and I have Eternity Force. Like, I will do so much damage to the squishies, even, even really against the Red Cane, because up until now he's gone for lethality. He went for Yomu's, Yuma's Ghost Blade. Oh, look at that. I wanted to block his ultimate. Flash? No, he juked me. I need to kill this Tristana. Come on. Yes. You know why I wanted to kill this Tristana? Because there was a shutdown on her. 600 gold shutdown. I wanted to kill her. Now I killed her. My team should have an advantage. Because the enemy Tristana was a big problem. Oh, that's a beautiful, beautiful Varus ultimate. Beautiful. Come on. Yes. Let's go, boys. There we go. See, that's why I wanted to kill the Tristana. Because Tristana was the main damage of the enemies as of this stage of the game. And in a 1 versus 5 situation, I was somehow able to kill the Tristana. Which was pretty nice, of course. And they stole Dragon. Very, very well played by my team. Great follow-up. Varys went for the Collector, which is... Uh, not a good item. <laughs> it's not good. Because the whole point of Varys is to poke the enemies down. And then, you know, of course, you can finish them off. But it's mainly poking them down. You don't really want to go for a collector. I don't know. It's just not good. You're, you're also wasting crit stats. Varus hates crit. Oh, come on. I should now run away because three people are roaming to me. Also, remember, when you have the Muramana, you can literally use your first ability to traverse through the map. Even if you're not hitting jungle camps or anything, the cooldown will literally just be th like three and a half seconds. And later on, it will go down to like two and a half. It is, I know it's crazy, but like you can just literally move around in the map with your first ability. He says a winning dragon lane. How about top lane, brother? I'm 4,000 gold ahead. <laughs> you know, should get some credits as well for that one. Ooh, they're here. Oh no. Oh! She ulted me over the wall. She saved me. Tristana saved me. What the hell? She, she saved me. And now all of them got baited and all of them died. Tristana just saved me. Nice. Did you see that? I would have died if Tristana didn't ult me. But Tristana ulted me to push me over the wall. And she pushed me out of the Leona stun. Which is pretty funny. And now I'm alive and well. Nice. <laughs> All of them are dead. That's pretty tragic, not gonna lie. I, I would have just survived. Or I would have died. I thought I was dead, but then somehow Tristana just ulted me away and I was fine. I wanted to just split push, but then my team was fighting, so now I'm rotating to possibly help them. The Kane is a problem, by the way. He's level 13. He's a whole level ahead of me. I quickly took the Scuttle Crab. Now I should try to kill the Kane. Oh, wow, the damage. Okay, now I need to flash out. Yeah, now I don't have my ultimate anymore. I just all into the cane. Because I wanted to make sure that we killed the cane right there. Even though I could have maybe killed him without my ult. I just, wa I just wanted to make sure to get that kill, to be honest. Like, it's not even a problem if you miss your first ability with this build, by the way. Because the cooldown is so damn low. Literally three and a half seconds. How crazy is that? I could try to jump over the wall here to try to take the blue buff. There we go. That's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, you take jungle really fast as well with this build, because you can spam your first ability. Look at the cooldown, it's 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 like, I think it's like 1.4 seconds if you hit it, something like that. What? How ridiculous, like how, even when I'm rewatching the game, how ridiculous is that? Because if I'm in a 1v1 situation right now, 
I, I, of course, hitting vitals is important, but I don't even have to hit vitals to uh, damage most enemies. I just have to spam my first ability and just do the damage it does, and I'll win. I'm going back here because they're probably rotating. I could have maybe gotten the turret, but I was like, no. I just want to go back because I don't want to give them Baron either. Yeah, there we go. Like, Vex is right there. I could have taken the turret and killed Vex, but I actually chose to rotate to mid lane to help my team. Like, now you can see... Wait, 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 what? Wait a damn second. Just wait a damn, did I just one shot him from? Well, what can I say guys? Muramana is the new item on Fiora. And if that doesn't prove it to you, what the hell? I don't even have a Divine Sunderer. Ooh, ooh. Like, look, here I'm doing the strategy where you just spam your abilities. And I killed him. I'm dead, though. But it's fine, because yet again, that's a 700 gold shutdown. This is fine. My team should be able to win the 4 versus 4. Uh, 4 versus 2. I killed, I killed, like, most of them. But Muramana is ridiculously strong, guys. You can just chase down enemies so easily. Especially if you're chasing down an ADC, like a Jinx or an Ezreal or something. They can never run away from you because you're so much faster with the jumping. Even if they jump... Oh, wow. Even if they jump over a wall, you can just follow them. And even if you don't hit your first ability, you can follow them. And the cooldown is only going to be like three seconds. It's not like old Fiora where, you know, if you, if you don't hit anything with your first ability, the cooldown is like six, seven seconds. It's only two and a, it's only like two and a half seconds right now. Three and a half, sorry. Ooh, they're losing that fight. Are they losing? They're kind of losing. Oh yeah, they are losing. But me, me, what am I gonna do? Protobot, boom, boom, boom. Come on, I killed him and I flashed away. Chef's kiss on that one. Chef's kiss on that one. That one was an absolute banger, what can I say? I proc'd my ultimate decently fast. Of course it could have been faster, I know that. Proc'd it decently fast. I killed him, I healed up, and then I went away. He's good. Yeah, nice. Well done by the Kha'Zix as well. I'm gonna go for the blue buff as well, together with the Kha'Zix, of course. I'm not gonna take it from him. Oh, I took it from him. I didn't mean to do that. I'm so sorry. I did not mean... To. Like, of course he shouldn't steal it, because... If he takes it, it's gonna drop a blue buff for you too. And he's a jungler, he gets more gold from jungle camps because he has a smite. So, taking that, I'm literally grieving him. So, I'm ulting Leona here. Look at that damage! I proc'd my ult fast! Oof! Oof! Look at. What? What is happening? Look at how strong I am! Oh no. I'm gonna proc about. Or, um, yeah. I'm gonna dash with my first ability to the other way. Like, I was waiting to see where he would ult. I'm just kind of messing with him here, you can see. And he's dead. But, you know what's crazy? I destroyed Leona with a Trinity Force. I don't even have a Divine Sunderer. Can you imagine how much damage you would do to a tank like a Leona if you have a Divine Sunderer instead of a Trinity Force? But of course, in this game, I went for Trinity Force because they're so squishy. But you see what I mean? Like, Muram on a late game... If I had a Divine Sunder, I would have done even more damage to the Leona right there, because she's a tank. Now I'm going to apply pressure on the side lane. Um, but you can see, I am playing Fiora much different from before. Like before, I would like, to, you know, I would love go, uh, to go for a hole breaker. But now I'm more of a team fighter as a Fiora. Even though that doesn't really fit her playstyle. Well, I'm saying team fighter, but what I actually mean is like fighting skirmishes. Really trying to catch out enemies and like catch them off guard. You know, catch one enemy, catch two, catch three. I'm not trying to, you know, go for a full on five versus five. If you've actually looked properly throughout this gameplay, you'll see that we, I don't think we've had a single five versus five. Because those are things you want to avoid as a Fiora. You want to avoid five versus fives. I'm going to try to sneak this turret right here actually. And then I could ult the Leona possibly. Ah, I'm just running away, it's fine. But yes, you want to avoid 5 versus 5. You want to make sure you fight these, these small little 1v4s, 1v2s. Oh, I could ult him. Look at that damage. What the hell? Again, not perfect with the ultimate, but it's fine. It's okay. 
it's not the end of the world. But yes, I, I need to do better with the ultimate for sure. Like that's definitely my improving point. Because, you know, I'm saying that because I used to be so good with the ultimate, but now clearly I need to do better than this. I wanted to block his stun here, but he didn't go for me. If I blocked his stun, yeah, they surrender. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this new crazy way of playing Fiora. You know, more of a catching out enemy type of playstyle. Still avoiding teamfights, but less split pushing. So let's take a look at how much damage I did and everything like that. I think I should be the MVP. Oh, Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix did really, really well as well. Let's see. I did 31,000 damage, which is quite a lot of damage, by the way, as a Fiora. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.